back. You're watching the Small and Mid-Cap show. I'm Mahima Vachrajani and with me is Anushi Vakharia. Well, um, today we are going to talk to a very interesting management of Tega Industries. Tega Industries came out with its Q1 FI25 earnings where revenue uh, saw an uptick of roughly 27%. EBITDA was up around 63%. Margins um, improved from 14.7% to 18.9% and overall net profit improved by 72% YOY. Now to discuss as to how the quarter has gone by and what uh, FI25 looks like for the company, we are joined by Mehul Mohanka, uh, Managing Director and Group CEO of Tega Industries. Uh, welcome to the show Mr. Mohanka. My first question to you is that uh, the kind of revenue and uh, margin growth uh, you have seen um, is you know on account of uh, revenue growth due to spillover from last quarter and also your other income is um, on a higher note. So I want to understand that how sustainable this is um, in the next three quarters for FI25. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, so as you rightly said, uh, we had in our Q4 earnings call already mentioned the fact that we had some revenue spillover from uh, Q4, which we were expecting to monetize in Q1. And a large part of that has played out. So when we talk about, you know, almost close to a 27% uh, growth uh, in, in year on year uh, for the quarter, that needs to be normalized for the spillover that we experienced from Q4 into Q1. So we would still stay steady state uh, growth levels would be closer to about 15% uh, as we've always uh, guided the markets. Mr. Mohanka, hi. Um, you have mentioned that you want to maintain a 15% of a growth guidance going forward. But, you know, there was an interesting point that was mentioned in the conference call about the significant growth that you're seeing beyond FY25. Can you expand more on that space? Where are you looking the growth levers coming in from? So we've got some additional capacity coming through in, in the next year. As we mentioned that in around June 25, we're expecting our uh, Chilean uh, plant to be completely operational. And that would bring additional capacity, which will help us uh, monetize some of it in the next financial year, moving on to the next uh, few years from there on. So, so that's something that uh, we, you know, will help us uh, lever up our uh, growth estimates going forward. Okay, so Mr. Wonka, then I want to understand, um, let's say from a long-term perspective for two years, what is the kind of capex that you're planning? And, um, you know, in your con call, you've mentioned that your capacity utilizations are approximately 65%. So where will these utilizations be at um, by the end of FY25 and also by the end of FY26? So, I mean, as you know, we've got the uh, new capacity coming up in Chile, which is estimated to be around $30 million of spend for us. And uh, we recently announced uh, further expansion uh, in our uh, plant in the Hague in, in India. So that's going to come at a tune of about 30 crores phased over two years. And uh, that's the CapEx outlay for us over the next, uh, I would say, two years from here on. And uh, yes, we do operate at about 65% capacity utilization. And we see that holding steady um, at about 65 to 70% going forward. Because as you know, I mean, quarter on quarter, we do uh, you know, hit certain peaks uh, in our revenues, uh, which is difficult to to predict and plan for. So we always keep some headroom uh, to take care of uh, these peaks that that we experience during the quarter. So so that's an ideal level where we we try and maintain our capacity utilization at. Okay, that's a fair level to look at. But now, what is the revenue potential that we are looking from this trillion plan that you've mentioned? And also, are we looking at any funding requirements for the capex plans that you've outlined? <laughs> So Chile at, at full capacity would give us an incremental revenue of about 800 crores uh, going forward. And uh, the capacity expansion is largely being funded internally through internal accruals and some debt. Uh, that's how we, we're funding the CapEx. And the, the 30 crores that we plan to spend in India is, is primarily through internal accruals. And Mr. Monka, uh, so, you know, with respect to your order book, um, if, if I also add the NMDC order, uh, it's roughly around 650 crores. Uh, I want to understand that what will be the execution timelines uh, for this entire 650 crore order book? So, uh, we would look at, say, if I, if I leave alone the NMDC order and I look and I leave the European contract that we have in, uh, currently in execution, our total order book is roughly at about 560 crores uh, as, of, as of June 24. And... Uh, the NMDC order is going to be executed over a period of about 26 months. That's as per contract. 
and the European contract runs uh, for the next six years. So the 560 crores order book that we have X uh, NMDC and, and the European contract will be monetized during this uh, financial year itself. Okay, so 26 months for the NMDC order that we are looking at, but now onto the integration of the Tega McNally plant. What's the status here? How's the progress going on on this front? And again, last year, if you see the increment in margins that we have looked at, 5% to 10%, what's the outlook in terms of margins? What are more synergies that we are looking at going forward for this one? So the uh, McNally Saji business is integrating well. As you know, we've renamed the company to Tega uh, McNally Minerals now. And uh, it's, it's on track. Uh, we continue to um, be very, very bullish about our growth plans with the equipment business. Uh, we've again uh, you know, mentioned in, in my umpteen forums that uh, we're looking at a 15% growth in, in the OEM business as well. And uh, last year we ended at about 10% EBITDA levels. We expecting it to be uh, you know, about 200 to 300 basis points above that in, in this uh, fiscal year. Got it. Mr. Monka, so I want to understand that since you said that, you know, you're targeting a 15% growth in your OEM and also you're very bullish uh, with respect to your uh, equipment business. Right now, uh, the share of equipments uh, to the total revenue is roughly 11%. And in terms of, um, you know, margins, I want to understand that when it comes to the consumer business, uh, consumables business it's around 20 to 22 percent but um, for equipment it is roughly uh, 10 to 11 percent and plus the growth that you've guided so i want to understand that then where will the blended margins be at overall so the blended margins will be roughly at about 21 to 22 odd percent and uh, the margin profiles of the two segments are completely different so in the consumables business the margin levels are higher and the equipment business, it's a bit moderated given the fact that it's more capital uh, equipment intensive. So, so at a blended level, we're still looking at about a 21% uh, EBITDA margin overall. Okay, and coming to the outlook on two of the sectors you have, you've mentioned that 70 or 5% of your business comes from the copper and gold mine ores. What's the outlook on these industries going forward? Are we looking at a 2.2% of a, compared to the 2.2% growth that we saw in the coppers? So, so the metal markets are growing at about two and a half to three percent, but but our business, as you know, I mean, is growing at about fifteen percent. If I look at annualized return, but and and that's primarily happening because of multiple reasons. Uh, it's market expansion, it's conversion, new uh, you know products that we're putting out in the market. So, so we feel that our you know growth rates will always be higher than the industry average or the or the growth rates of the metal industry be it gold or copper. So, and gold and coppers are in a good place as of now, and, and we feel that uh, it's going to be sustainable going forward. You know, I want to understand uh, in terms of, you know, uh, your geographical expansion, uh, Mr. Mohanka, that uh, are you planning to explore any new geographies by the end of uh, FI25? So currently we have our hands pretty much full. We, we ship to almost 96 countries today globally. And uh, we have a physical presence in about 18 of them. And uh, we continue to explore uh, new markets, but more in and around where we're already uh, based out of. So we don't see any significant addition to any geographical territories that we have on board, but we continue to press ahead in the, exist in the markets that we're already present in. Got it. Well, Mr. Mohanka, thank you so much for giving us those insights on Tega Industries and all the best um, sure. for FI25. But with that, it's all that we have on the show for now. Uh, keep watching NDTV Profit for more news and updates.